Hello everyone, welcome to another uh, in our series of videos, Scripting with Contact, Building Instruments. In this video I would like to show how you script radio buttons. Uh, this has been requested uh, in a comment in one of the other videos, so I thought I'd take care of, of this topic in a dedicated video. It's not a lot, but let's quickly get to it. So what are radio buttons actually? So I have here an instrument of mine, yes, shameless uh, self-promotion. And in some cases, you have a, a UX requirement that there are three switches or buttons, um, same thing, more or less, that um, kind of give some feedback on the UX, like right here. Uh, there's the choice of the LFOs, and it wouldn't be really nice to put uh, this choice in a menu, right? It could have been in a menu, LFO 1, 2, 3, 4, X, but then it's two clicks, right? It's one click, so for example, here in the filter, where here it actually does make sense, but here in the filter, one click, second click inside to select what you need. Now here with the filters, you also have tons of choices, right? So it doesn't make sense if you have something where you have 50 choices or something like that to put um, in radio buttons, but when there are just a few, three, or even in this case, five, it really depends, it might make sense. And what is unique about coding this thing is that you have, um, let's take this case, you have three over here, right? You have three buttons. But when one of them is on, the rest of them should be off. And the logic should be kind of stable that it doesn't matter from which one you go to which one. And also, yeah, that you could just really kind of browse these buttons, right? And that if, for example, if I'm already on mod here, if I click on mod again, that nothing weird happens, right? That it stays on mod. Um, so let's try coding something exactly like this. Let's take three, but it scales the same way whether you have three or five or seven or however many you need. But again, I would argue if you start getting into the seven or whatever territory, then you probably want a menu in the end. But that is another story. So let's let's get to it. I have a completely empty NKI. I'm actually not gonna do what we did the other times with the resource container and everything, because here we're just showing a script example. So not like a, an NKI that we're saving or anything like that. I double clicked on the rack. I created a new NKI. I'm going into the script editor. One thing I will do just for my ease of uh, kind of working is I'm going to change it to apply from clipboard. So I only need to copy what I write here, but I don't need to do control V. I can just click and then apply. I can just click apply. It um, might seem small, but it's super, it just makes life easier. So we're, so we're set. Yeah, we have all this thing here. Ignore this. I don't know what I pasted here. Whatever, we'll, we'll soon uh, paste what we actually need. Let's just move this here so I know what we're working with. And remember here I'm in VS Code, empty file. I'm gonna change it to the KSP syntax as you should already know. And obviously the first thing we need is we need an init callback. So we're gonna write our little on init uh, and on. So we have kind of the, the structure for it and we're gonna start inserting things. What we really need here are three switches, right, for our example. So let's just do switch and use the code completion and let's call this switch one. Um, and then let's do um, three of them. So one, two, and then three. Just at this point, let's quickly check that we're okay. So, and, and follow the workflow. Again, I'm, I'm pressing control C, I'm copying. And then the only thing I need to do since I have a platform clipboard is just paste. And we can see that we did everything correctly. And we really don't care here about uh, performance view, you know, in the previous clips, right? Like if you're building an actual instrument, you would have more code here on in it. But for our example, we don't need a performance view. We don't need anything. To clarify, if I now move out of the edit view, there is no performance view. And maybe just to drive the point home really quickly. So if I do make perf view and then repaste it over here and exit the um, edit view, then we will have our performance view. Doesn't matter, let's leave it in, but we'll be working in the edit view. So we have our three switches, right? And again, the behavior right now, if I now switch one, like it's not what we want, right? They have no relationship to each other whatsoever. And since we have three or more than that, we need to kind of build that relationship. So what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna kind of use a flag and that flag will keep track of which switch is active. You will see in a minute what I mean. So we're gonna declare one more thing. Um, yeah, how should we call it in this example case? Let's call it our switch switch flag. Switch flag, or sorry, we need of course, um, and this is not a UI um, 
widget, it's just a normal um, integer variable. So switch flag. And with integer variables, you can already assign with the declaration. We're going to do switch flag zero. And nothing should happen. Indeed, it's just in the background. Now we have this flag. And now what we kind of want to do is, um, you know what? So we know also our result is OK. Let's also declare a label here. Let's call it label. And label requires that we enter width and height. Fine, so we have it. And now what we will do is, depending on the state of the switch, let's set a different text for, for the label. So let's first thing create the function, and we call that function from the UI, uh, UI callback. So let's do function set label text whatever, and do end function. And then we will we and then what we will do in the function is instead of looking at which switch is actually active, we will be checking what the state of this switch flag is. Now you might already be thinking a little bit ahead that in the UI controls, um, in their callbacks, we will be actually setting this switch flag to what we will need. So let's prepare, let's continue preparing this. So we need a select case, right? And what we want to select is this switch flag. So we'll go to the switch flag. And we will say, if it's on, if switch flag is zero, and let's just quickly build the cases, right? So we have three cases, so zero, one, and remember all the time, contact is zero based. So we have zero, one, and two. We end the select, we end the function, we don't need much more than that. And inside, we will just be setting the text for this example. So set text, and, and we will be taking the label. All right, so we have our label over here, and let's, we could prepare an array or paste something. Let's just hard code our text here just, um, just so we have it. So let's do hello, um, and let's do, let's do world, and yo, hello world, yo. So that's kind of the functionality that we will have. So now we have it set up. Let's see that we have no errors, but obviously we don't expect it to do anything yet. We have our label, we have our switches, nothing happens when we click our labels. All expected, right? So now let's go on to the very kind of last step over here and to the UI controls. So let's do the very first one and think about what we need to happen. So the first one that we need um, is switch one. Let's copy it in here and we can kind of remove the boilerplate code and start thinking what we need. So first of all, if it's already, if it's already on one and the user clicks, it shouldn't go back to zero, right? So let's do first figure out if switch, if it equals zero, right? And if it doesn't, and we'll put the code in there. One second, let's close the if statement. If it doesn't, if it doesn't equal, um, if it actually equals one, we don't want it to go back to equal zero. So let's let's kind of think about it for a second. Click, now it's on one. A click comes in, UI control is triggered. What is normally happening with a switch is that it moves to zero, right? Wh whatever you do inside, we want to override that. So we're going to say, look, if it's on one and the user clicks, it doesn't go to zero. It stays on one, like it stays on this selection. So let's quickly take care of that. This is the easy part, the easiest part, I guess. And let's do switch equals, uh, switch one equals one. And now at least this part should probably already work. So we can paste that in. Oh, nope, what did we do? Oh, it's not, well, how did I get to that? So it's switch one, obviously. So switch one, let's apply. Right, that's pretty cool. And now at least, now it's on zero. Let's click one, cool, expected. Now if I click on one, I expect it to stay on one. And it did not. Oh, I'm sorry, If that's our mistake. You see, if it's one, if it's already on one. Right, legitimate, we had a mistake here. All right, so now, now it works, right? Maybe it flashes a little bit, it's fine. It stays, it shows that the user clicked, it registers the click, but it stays on one. This is exactly what we want. And now we want to put the actual code in for what if it was actually clicked and it needs to take like a specific action and not just take care of the UX like in the else case. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to set the switch flag. So we'll say that if the switch, if the first switch is the one that's being clicked and it equals one. So if it comes in, we say that the switch flag equals zero. 
So, so now, when you click here, forget about the relationship to the other ones, at least this is taken care of. And we can already kind of test this by doing this, um, but we also need to call our function, right? So we can say, look, switch flag is zero. Now call set label text. It will call set label text. It will select the switch flag and it will realize that the case is zero. And if we're lucky, we'll have hello written in our label. So let's check it out. Amazing, we have hello. This switch stays on, but obviously there is yet no relation to the other switches. So that is the remaining thing to do. Now think about it. If this one is selected, like let's say these, this, I don't, well, we can't have two on. Let's say this was on and this was actually off, right? And, and you notice another thing. There is no way to turn it off right now. We, and this, this guy was on and now we, we click switch one. So the first thing that should happen is that this should turn off. So it's quite simple. There's not too much to it. So what we're gonna do is exactly that. We're gonna go to switch two and we're gonna say that switch two actually equals zero at this in this case and switch three as well. So now let's check it out. So let's go back here and let's now click switch three. Let's pretend we're on switch three and let's move to switch one. Now we should be seeing the label and switch three turning off. Amazing, that actually worked. Obviously switch two not yet and it's not reacting if it's already clicked. So this will all kind of, these, these, these discrepancies will all be taken care of once all three are in there. And now it's actually very easy. We copy paste the whole thing because it's the, the same code and we just need to switch the numbers. So this one was relating to switch one. Now it's relating to switch two. So everything that actually relates to this control coming in, we change to two. The switch flag is on the next case, right? Now it should be world. Very, very easy stuff. And now switch one actually has to equal zero and switch three has to equal zero. Let's not look at this yet. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. So let's do all three and then look and then see what we have and check if we have any mistakes. So switch three, switch three, and here we have one and two, and then the switch flag is on two, right? So we just kind of sequentially go by all of them. And now let's copy the whole thing and paste it in. <clears throat> so now, oh, and you notice another thing. Like if you go back to, to this, like it, it depends really on your use case, but for the common use case, one of them should always be on, right? Like it can't be neither on amp or on field. Like it can't be on, an, uh, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Basically, one of them needs to be selected at all times. And here we're loading and it's not selected. So maybe also let's quickly take care of that. And if you remember, we cannot call um, functions from the init callback. If we want to call a function, we need to call the function from the on persistence change callback. It's just how things work. So let's define our persistence change callback really quickly. We're not doing any magic here. We're just going to call our set label text and call um, call set label text. And we're also going to do one more thing in the in the in the because the first one, in our case, the first one should be selected, whatever, maybe in the snapshot or something else happens later in your instrument, but at least the very init state is that this switch is on one. So similar to here, you load the instrument, the amp, like the first case is loaded, the amp envelope is loaded and you can click through the rest. We're really kind of mimicking what you see here. So we're telling it that the first, that switch number one should start as on, we're calling the, the set label text right after our, our init callback, setting, checking this, setting um, the hello or whatever text should actually be in there. And now I think we will have the behavior that we need, but let's make sure one more time. So let's apply. Great, switch one is turned on. The, the correct text that switch one or the correct behavior that it should show um, is happening. We're moving to the switches. Switch two is showing world. We move back to switch one. We move to three. We cannot disable any of the switches. So this behavior, this is this is what we need. We're, we're done basically. And you can basically, uh, yeah, just use it exactly in the same way. And remember, if you now want to scale up, um, it's very easy, just add the next one. So if a hypothetical, now of course we're not gonna have this guy because we never declared, but a hypothetical fourth one is just that, that. you know, you just go to the next one your flag is the next step, and you make sure that, in this case, now one, two, three. 
are, are off. And of course, yeah, you need to do it for, for all kids. You need to make sure that number four is also turned off in, in each one. That's it. I hope this video was useful. It's really super, super simple. I'll keep the screen maybe here for a second so you can follow the, I'll make it big. This is the logic that you need. And I'll see you in the next video. Have fun. Happy scripting.